Aum. Nishidya Nikilo Padhi Neti Neti Tivakyataha Vidya Daikyang Mahavakyayal Jivatma Paramatmano Nishidya, after negating, Nikila Upadhin, all conditionings, Neti Neti, not this, not this, Iti, thus, Vakyataha, from the scriptural saying, Vidyat, no, Aikyang, non difference, Mahavakyai, by the great sayings, Jiva Atma Parama Atmano, of the individual soul and the supreme soul. The non difference of the individual soul and the supreme soul, indicated by the Mahavakyas, has to be realized by negation of the Upadis, limiting adjuncts, through the scriptural statement, not this. Not this. Namaste. So the non-difference between the individual soul and Brahman is like the fundamental teaching of Advaita. And that's the theory. But what is the practice? Well, this verse covers them both. The theory is given in the Mahavakyas. That is, the pithy, essential statements of the Vedas. So, first of all, let's take a look at the four principal Mahavakyas. The Chatura Mahavakyani the four great sayings of the four Vedas. Pragnanam Brahma. Pragnana, perfect knowledge, is Brahman. That's from Aitareya Upanishad of the Rig Veda. I am Atma Brahma. This self, Atman, is Brahman. That's from the Mandukya Upanishad of the Atharva Veda. Tattvamasi, thou art that, from the Chandogya Upanishad of the Samaveda. And Aham Brahmasmi, I am Brahman, from the Brihararanyaka Upanishad of the Yajurveda. So this is the theory. But what about the practice? How do you actually practically realize that you are one with Brahman. Well, you're already one with Brahman. <laughs> Everyone is. That's why Ramana Maharshi said, to claim either to be enlightened or not to be enlightened opens wide grounds for ridicule. <laughs> You dummy! <laughs> Don't you know that you're already Brahman? So, there's really no meaning to either of those claims. Say, either I am enlightened or I'm not enlightened is meaningless because everybody is already Brahman. So then the question is simply, how do we realize it? Or, to state it in a better way, how do we recognize it? How do we discover it? It's already there, just waiting to be noticed. So the second part of the verse, through nullification of the upadis, by the scriptural statement, neti neti. Neti means na iti, not this. And the repeating of the word signifies an ongoing process. Neti, 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 neti. Huh? 
And what does it refer to? The Upadis. What are Upadis? The concept, I am this body, or I am this mind, or I am my name, my possessions, my attachments, my identifications, uh, all this nonsense. <laughs> And getting right down to the original Upadi, I am an individual separate from Brahman. If we can remove all these Upadis, Upadi means limiting adjunct. Something added on as an adjunct, it's not part of our original self. And it's a limit. It says, I am this, and I am not that. So, if one says, for example, I am an individual, then I am not Brahman because Brahman is one. There is no individuality in Brahman because Brahman is everything. Brahman is the all. So, there's no distinction of one individual from another or one thing from another in Brahman. It's all universal, complete, not an individual, uh, and so on. So how do we get to this point where we discover or recognize that we are indeed Brahman? Well, these Mahavakyas can help. And there are more Mahavakyas from other sources as well. In the Shiva Purana, it is stated, Subramanya said, Now the Mahavakyas, the great statements of the Vedas and Upanishads, perfect knowledge is Brahman. I am Brahman. Thou art that. This Atman is Brahman. All this is pervaded by the Lord. I am the vital breath, prana. Atman is perfect knowledge. What is here is there. What is there is here. It is other than what is known. Verily, it is other than what is unknown, too. This is your soul, the imminent and the deathless one. He who is in this Purusha and he who is in the sun both are the same. I am the great Brahman, the greatest, greater than the greatest. I am myself Brahman, characterized by bliss, since I am the master of the Vedas and the Shastras. Brahman is stationed in all living beings. Undoubtedly, I am that alone. I am the vital breath of the elements, of the earth, of the waters, of the fire, of the wind, of space, and of the three gunas. I am all. I am the Atman of all. I transmigrate. I am without a second because I have everything in my Atman, past, present, and future. Indeed, all this is Brahman. I am all. I am deliberated. He who is this is I. I am he. I am Hangsa. I am he. This shall be meditated upon always and everywhere. So these pithy, succinct, erudite statements give the final conclusion of all Vedas and Vedanta. Why can't we realize them? It's because we're attached to our upadis. That's all. So, okay, let's say you don't want to throw out these ideas, these upadis, completely. Well, then, just set them aside, huh? temporarily, like a simulation. What would it be? How would I feel? What would my existence look like if I were to set aside this upadi and that upadi and the other upadi and all of the upadis? What would it be? Well, 
This is also given in the Upanishads. Because when there is duality, as it were, then one smells something, one sees something, one hears something, one speaks something, one thinks something, one knows something. But when, to the knower of Brahman, everything has become the self, then what should one smell and through what? What should one see and through what? What should one hear and through what? What should one speak and through what? What should one think and through what? What should one know and through what? Through what should one know that owing to which all this is known? Through what, O oh my Treyi, should one know the knower? As Ramana Maharshi used to say, you cannot see Brahman. You can only be Brahman. Brahman is never an object. It's never the effect of anything. It's always detached. It's unrelated to anything. And it's uninferable. In other words, there is no evidence, no tangible proof of Brahman's existence except to the individual himself. It's completely subjective. So you cannot see Brahman, but you can be Brahman. In fact, you already are. <laughs> there is no other theory that explains consciousness other than the fact that we are Brahman. And Brahman chooses to express itself through us, through these individualities, these personalities, these purushas, these beings, these persons, these bodies, etc. All these are objects because they can be perceived. But consciousness itself cannot be known by anything else. Through what shall one know the knower? That by which all things are known. Just like your eye cannot see itself without a mirror. Ah, and it can see. But there is no mirror that reflects pure consciousness. The only thing we can say is, I am aware. Therefore, I am Brahman. Because only Brahman is the source of consciousness. And everything else. <laughs> but specifically, even though the causes of the material elements and objects can be traced back to some previous cause, the origin of consciousness cannot that is because consciousness is absolute. That means there is no support. There is no cause. There is no source of consciousness that can be isolated and identified. Because, again, consciousness is completely subjective. It's never objective. It can't be seen. It can't be known. It's beyond the knowable and the unknowable. Beyond the known and the unknown. So, see, this is a conundrum for the materialists because they have to ascribe a cause to everything. Well, why did this universe come into existence? Oh, because of uh, chemicals and atoms. How did the chemicals and atoms come into existence? Oh, it was the Big Bang. And how did the Big Bang come into existence? Oh, uh, well, <laughs> they can't answer. That's because the source of everything is Brahman, and Brahman is absolute. See, it's all very simple if you accept the Vedas. And if you don't, it leads to an endless regression, an infinite regression of cause and effect. Here's this effect, the universe. 
Now, what is the cause? And then what is the cause of that? And what is the cause of that? It never ends. The farther they look out into space with bigger and bigger telescopes, the more galaxies and weird stuff they're going to see. And the same with looking into the atom through these accelerators and stuff. The deeper you go into the atom, the more little subparticles and weird things you find, isn't it? It never ends. Because... The creation is fractal. And just like you can zoom in on a fractal basically forever, you can zoom in on the cosmos or on the atom forever and never run out of new, fresh structure because it's fractal. Even if there is no structure, it would be generated by you looking for it. That's the way the universe is. Again, because we are Brahman. So try to get this into your head, huh? To where you start looking at things from the point of view of these Mahavakyas. Oh, I am Brahman. Okay, I accept that. Now I will begin to view everything from the point of view that I am Brahman and value everything accordingly. So just like when, for example, let's say uh, your um, long lost grand uncle dies and unknown to you, he's left you uh, a few billion dollars in his will. Or you win the lottery. Uh, the Powerball mega jackpot or whatever. <laughs> Suddenly you're rich beyond your wildest dreams, way beyond your actual needs. So isn't that going to change the way you look at things? Isn't that going to change your values, how you value things? Because suddenly something that was out of reach because it was too expensive isn't out of reach or too expensive at all anymore. So the private jet, the private island, you know, whatever, is suddenly a possibility. So in the same way, when you realize or when you accept, I am Brahman, aham brahmasmi, that changes our values. Because so many things that were out of reach before become real possibilities. So I'm not going to spoil it by, you know, running down all of the uh, details. But you get the picture. This is the meditation. Aham brahmasmi, tattvamasi. Everything is Brahman. I am Brahman, you are Brahman. You know, the wall over there is Brahman. <laughs> the camera here is Brahman. Hi. Everything is Brahman. So, all right. How is that going to change the way I look at life? It's going to make me a lot more detached, isn't it? Knowing that this body is not myself. This mind is not myself. Even my great vaunted intelligence... <laughs> is not myself. Myself is only pure consciousness, different from all objects, pure, eternal, unconditioned, able to see through everything, able to penetrate and be present everywhere. These are just some of the things that fall out from accepting these Mahavakyas. And then doing the practice, sitting, removing those upadis, huh? trashing them, neti, 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 until there's nothing left. When you reach that point, 
Only the self is left. And that is the reality. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum. Aum Namah Shivaya. <laughs>